Hi everyone and welcome back to English with Kaylee. In today's video we're going to be analysing one of Jackie Kay's poems entitled Divorce. Um, so this is actually on the CAIE A-level test paper, uh, paper 4 for the pre and post 1900s poetry and prose selection. So let's get started. So as I said, the, the poem we're going to take a look at today is entitled Divorce. And the themes that we see within this poem are themes of childhood, parenthood, separation and abuse. So first of all, I'm just going to read through the poem for you. So, divorce. I did not promise to stay with you till death do us part or anything like that. So part I must and quickly. There are things I cannot suffer any longer. Mother, you never ever said a kind word or a thank you for all the tedious chores I have done. Father, your breath smells like a camel's and gives me the hump. All you ever say is, are you off in the cream puff, Lady Muck? In this day and age, I would be better off in an orphanage. I want a divorce. There are parents in the world whose faces turn up to the light who speak in the soft murmur of rivers and never shout. There are parents who stroke their children's cheeks in the dead of night and sing in the colourful voices of rainbows, red to blue. These parents are not you. I never chose you. You are rough and wild. I don't want to be your child. All you do is shout and that's not right. I will file for divorce in the morning at first light. So that's the poem in its entirety. So now we're going to break it down and we're going to look into our analysis. So we have the title Divorce. Um, this comes from Jackie Kay's, one of Jackie Kay's children's collections, which is entitled Three Has Gone. Um, and it's also present in her new and selected poems uh, of her collection called Darling. Um, and that's where the poem is taken from for the A-level exam. Um, obviously, the connotations of divorce look at marriage, but as we read through the poem, we can see this is actually a dramatic monologue from a child's perspective, looking at emancipation, divorce from her parents. Um, so she, they start the poem, the speaker starts with a very strong declaration, I did not promise. Um, and this use of the first person pronoun creates a very personal perspective for the speaker. Uh, we know it's something of great importance to them. I did not promise to stay with you till death do us part or anything like that. So again, we've got this marital reference um, and quite humorous, uh, you know, to say that marriage is obviously a choice two people make. Uh, to enter into together, uh, whereas she definitely did not. She had no choice over her, her family. Um, and so she goes on to say, so part I must and quickly. Um, again, we see this humour coming through um, and this almost, this inverted syntax, so part I must, almost gives her this, this air of uh, an, an adult voice. Um, but, and, and we see this word quickly, showing urgency uh, in her voice and in her feelings. She goes on to say, or the speaker, I should say, there are things I cannot suffer any longer. We see this beautiful enjambment here, um, as we do throughout the majority of the poem. Since it is a monologue, it's almost like an, an internal dialogue of, of how the speaker's feeling and the experiences and expressions they wish to share. So here we see, you know, we're questioning here the extent of the suffering and possibly the duration. Um, and I love this semicolon here as if the speaker is, is preparing for battle to fight. Um, and, and she goes on to say, and, and she, you know, the terms that she uses to address her family um, show a very much a detached and cold uh, syntax, mother, father. Um, so very detached. Uh, from the, their motherly and fatherly roles and the relationship that they have. Mother, you never ever said a kind word or a thank you for all the tedious chores I have done. And we'll go back to some of the, some of the words that she's chosen 
that Kay has chosen to include within this section. Um, but we move on to Father, your breath smells like a camel and gives me the hump. Um, this is a very much a crude description. I, I think as a reader, we're possibly more sympathetic to the parents than the speaker at this point um, for the way and the word she used to describe them. And the father, we see this father's voice coming through. Are you off in the cream puff, Lady Muck? Um, and now cream puff is, is an idiom, a word that we use to express an old, but quite a well-maintained car. Um, so here is it that Kay is possibly showing the age of the speaker and the parents. It's quite clear that the speaker is possibly able to drive or at an age where she's able, he or she is able to drive. Um, and looking at the parents, when we look at the syntax used, this is more of a, an old way um, of expressing this kind of old but well-maintained car. Um, and it does it question class. Possibly they can't afford, you know, the brand new, the very best, um, the best car at the time. Um, but they do look after their things. Um, and then we have this lady muck. Um, now, this is usually associated with a woman who behaves or acts as though she's better than others. Um, very oxymoronic, where we have lady, somebody who's very well respected, and then muck, which obviously connotates dirt uh, and, and rubbish. Um, but in this case, we're, we're almost seeing it as a, as a term of endearment, you know, that, that they want the best uh, for, the, for the child, um, you know, that they obviously treat him or her, the speaker, um, as they, you know, as somebody who they want to provide the best for. And, and then we get back this very sarcastic uh, question, this rude question, in this day and age, um, as if to say, you know, how, how dare you even insinuate that I could drive around um, in something so hideous or horrendous. Um, and then we have this very, very bold claim, I would be better off in an orphanage. Um, we definitely see the ignorance coming through here um, of, of the speaker and not truly understanding what life can really be like for people who, who, are not, who do not have a secure family unit. And we see this hyperbole, you know, I would be better off in the orphanage. It's very symbolic here of the, the childishness and, and the impulse the impulsive nature of the speaker. Um, and we see these kind of, um, this hyperbole throughout the stanza. Um, you never ever said a kind word. Uh, all the tedious chores. Um, and, and a sentence we looked at before, smells like a camel and gives me the hump. And I would be better off in an orphanage. You know, we do see this very childish like nature and ideas being expressed. Um, within this stanza. And, and I think that the structure, the sentence structure is quite, uh, quite important here to comment on. You know, th this, this movement between short sentences and longer sentences, some use of, of genre and, and then use of end stop lines, uh, it, it almost gives us this, this feeling of the speaker as somebody who, who's, who's kind of back and forth with their own interpretations of how they feel and what's happening at home. Um, you know, and, and this, this fighting, this, this way of wanting to fight with every little thing that goes on within the family unit. Then we move on to the second stanza, uh, and it starts very, very strongly uh, with this end stop line, I want a divorce. You know, this is very resolute a declarative sentence, this is what I want and this is what's going to happen. And then we see uh, a kind of, we see a, a, the semantic field here where we look more at nature. Um, there are parents in the world whose faces turn up to the light, who speak in soft murmurs of rivers and never shout. These parents who stroke their children's cheeks in the dead of night and sing in the colourful voices of rainbows, red to blue. And we have this, you know, this refrain, there are parents. Um, again, the use of this, you know, um, hyperbole to strengthen their argument. Um, and then we see these beautiful words coming through of river, 
dead of night, rainbows, rough and wild. We have this very serene imagery, um, you know, this dreamlike idea of the speaker using all this metaphorical language, soft murmur of rivers. Um, and again, that this really highlights their, their imagination of the perfect family unit. And in fact, what actually is reality. Um, so we get this, and then we see this juxtaposition of, of their own interpretation and definition of their parents. You are rough and wild. Um, so again, juxtaposing uh, their parents with this ideal um, imaginary family. These parents are not you, I never chose you. So we, we see a change in sentence structure here and the length. Uh, the previous sentences use enjambment, you know, to kind of almost flow like the river and this perfect idea of these loving parents. And it, as I said before, it's juxtaposed, juxtaposed with the speaker's feelings towards her own parents. Um, I don't want to be your child. So we have this quite strong caesura here. Um, again, this resolute, this very strong declarative sentence. Even though the, the child, the speaker, is quite childlike, they feel very secure in their decisions. All you do is shout, and that's not right. I will file for divorce in the morning at first light. So we've got this hyperbole again. Um, I will file for divorce. This very much, you know, over-the-top reaction to how she's feeling. Um, and we have this lovely rhyming couplet at the end, um, a very conclusive ending. And again, this absolute and resolute declaration, this isn't right. And because of that, this is what I'm going to do. Um, so in the exam, you have to hit AO5, uh, which is uh, the, the evaluation of varying opinions. Um, and one of the criticisms that we can apply to this particular poem is that of the psychoanalytic criticism. Um, and this adopts the method of reading employed by Freud and later theorists to interpret texts. And it argues that literary texts like dreams express the secret unconscious desires and anxiety of the author. Um, but not also, not only the author themselves, but also of the characters that are put into play. Um, of course, if we look at Kay's personal life, we know that she was adopted um, and she has a fantastic relationship with her adoptive parents. But is it perhaps a nod to the author's psyche within the relationship between her and her biological parents? Um, so that's something that we could look at. Um, and this critical endeavour seeks evidence from unresolved emotions, psychological conflicts, guilt, um, and so forth within what may well be disunified literary work. Um, so it can come from their, you know, an author's childhood trauma, family life, um, and, and it will be traceable within the behavior of the characters in the literary work. So this is one lens you could take to look at this particular poem. Um, I do hope that you found this video helpful. I will be creating a series of all of Jackie Kay's poetry um, and a short snapshot analysis of her work. Uh, please don't forget to like and subscribe for more English learning videos um, and I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye.